my comments are now proven wrong. My earlier comments where I was saying that her voice is, is too high to convey mm. the, the proper emotion. Welcome to Dastardly Hamster. Today I'm showing my friend Olivia Rodrigo. I'm going to try to make her a fan. If she likes this song, I get to show her another one. Tell us the name of this song. Uh, it appears to be All American Bitch. I am so excited to show you Olivia R Rodrigo. To me, she is sort of pushing this new pop punk wave back into the mainstream, which I'm really excited about. What is your expectation going into this? Well, you were talking about pop punk, so I am expecting something in the range of uh, Avril Lavigne or Avril Lavigne as uh, Anglophone might pronounce it. It doesn't sound like something that would immediately attract me, but since you selected it specifically for me, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm a little bit worried that I might find it too simple or lacking complexity, and I'm afraid that it might be a little too repetitive, but I'm willing to go for it. stiff as a board I pay attention to things that most people ignore And I'm alright in movies that make jokes about senseless cruelty, that's for sure And I am built like a mother and a total machine Waiting to get smacked in the face Be for your every little issue, I know just what you mean Darkness, I've got sun in my motherfucking pocket, best believe. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> sun in my pocket, uh, I think that's a reference to uh, another song, um, and I guess it's uh, kind of poking fun at looking on the bright side of life. The lyrics, I don't even have to, I'm not even going to say anything. This is something you just have to hear it. I, I just want your impression. I'm not even going to say anything yet. Definitely getting the Avril Lavigne feel. I've never really listened to Avril Lavigne, except when she was like, you know, big on the radio and stuff like that. But um, the thing that's kind of bothering me is the very uh, upper throat voice that she's mm -hmm. got. Um, it's just very light. And to me, it doesn't feel like there is a lot of heart or depth to it. When she's singing, it seems like she's trying to sound angry right but because there's no depth in her voice it feels inauthentic to me because it, it's not conveying the emotion that i feel that are you talking trying. about like when it got to the angrier part yeah because it didn't feel angry enough to me right okay no that's fair um i think that is one of the benefits of the studio version that one does sound a little bit angrier because she's not like switching so quickly but there's a reason i want to show you this version and we'll get to that <laughs> It feels like late 90s, early 2000s, that there was like a teen movie. Yeah. And the, the rebel girl walked in, mm -hmm. you know, the outcast, 
Yeah. Um, uh, this is the song that they would play when she's walking in, right? Yeah, it might be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or like the the day when she like, you know, she, she got wronged the day before and then she like, she cried at night and then she woke up the next morning full of gumption and stuff like that. This is like, she'd be like brushing her hair and brushing her teeth to this song. It feels uh, Biff naked E. Okay. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get mm -hmm. that. Uh, I do. I do appreciate that. She's got a few like little historical references in there. Mm. So the Kennedy uh, thing. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the sun sunshine in my pocket or whatever reference. Right. Uh, I feel like there's, something in there i feel mm -hmm. like if i sat down and read the lyrics on their own there would be a message in there and i can appreciate that uh and it also reminds me of the uh meredith brooks song i'm a bitch <laughs> okay <laughs> not yeah. just because of the title right but basically the message is uh, you know sort of take me as i am <laughs> Screaming Joe Hawkins would be proud. All the time, I'm grateful all the time. I'm sad. I do like that shock of, uh, I thought the song was over, and then she comes back into it. I do appreciate that. That's, uh, it provoked a, a, a feeling of surprise in me. So I can appreciate that. You're giggling like a schoolgirl. This, remember how we were talking earlier about like, you can look on the song and see the part that everyone looks at and where the like, the volume goes up. This is the part every time she does the song on any video, everyone goes to the screaming part because <laughs> she goes wild just screaming and then just quickly reverts back to like, everything is fine. I had to show you that in the live version because you don't really get the sense when you just hear it in studio, you don't get to see. Okay like that change in like her demeanor, which I think really adds to the song. My comments are now proven wrong. My earlier comments where I was saying that her voice is, is too high to convey mm. the, the proper emotion. I feel right. that there she, she did show that progression. So uh, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that she, she started in one spot and progressed into more emotion, more anger. Uh, plus one. Nice. I'm I'm grateful all she needs to clear her throat and hear her inhale. And I'm pretty when I cry. So, uh, first impressions. Um, it's not like a song that I'm ever going to love. I can appreciate it from an artistic perspective. I did appreciate that she has a little more range than I originally thought from her very high-pitched cutesy voice. Mm -hmm. There's at least one note that she really can't hit. It that... is live again. Oh, so that was the live version. That was live, yeah. Okay, okay. That's cool. That's good. I wouldn't be able to listen to an album of that. It's way too cutesy and high pitch. I, I did like the message behind it from what I could see. It does sound like it's it's very much like the Meredith Brooks song. It's, it, well, it's it, it feels more like it's poking fun at the idea of like, you know, I'm pretty when I cry. I'm always perfect. Everything's amazing, right? You right. Know, I wake <laughs> up, my hair, my makeup is already done. Uh, <laughs> I love, I, I love this character that she has created. Just some of the lines here are just so good. Like, I don't get angry when I'm pissed. It's like a contradiction, right? Like, yeah, like she's yeah, just yeah. so perfect in every way. I'm the eternal optimist. You know, I just, and then the next line is I scream inside to deal with it. And then that's the part where she just starts screaming. Yeah. Like you could see her having a breakdown and then she just goes yeah, back yeah, and, every, yeah. and everything's fine, right? Like, and then she says, I'm pretty when I cry. Like it's this- literally that scene. Yeah, like this character, <laughs> It's so interesting to me, this believable person who's sort of almost falling into 
like madness. Um, and you're watching it. You're watching this tumble happen in front of you. Well, someday yeah. we may have to listen to uh, Gently by Slipknot where they do that exact thing. Oh, cool. For me, yeah, basically it, it reminded me of that scene in Family Guy where Lois is like, I just repress it. And then there's like, I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. It sounds like it's a song about the Madonna whore dichotomy, which is the idea that every woman has this expectation of being both a Madonna, a virginal mother of Christ, and also a whore. There is no way to be perfect because you're always expected to be two extremes at once you're expected to be chaste and dress modestly while also being beautiful and stunning and attractive and it's just it's impossible to be those th those two things at once for me it was just like this is just somebody who's breaking down like that i'm witnessing a breakdown um but that that's also possible i'd be well, i'd be super interested in hearing what she has to say about it there's like so many good lines in this song um, to, yeah, to me, yeah. it sounds like it, the expectations of someone breaking down because of the expectations of society that oh, are okay. placed on women that are impossible to achieve all at once. That would that would make sense, actually. I like that. So, moment of truth. <laughs> what are you going to give Moment of this? truth. Uh, I'm going to give this a, 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 a solid three out of five hamsters. Okay. I didn't like it, but I appreciate it. Interesting. It, I'm not angry at anyone for liking it. I chose this for you because, number one, it only does the chorus twice. The first time it does the chorus, it's really short. And actually, she cuts it short right at the line. She says, got what you can't resist. I'm the perfect all-American. And then it just cuts off. She doesn't say the last line. Mm -hmm. And then she goes back to her like happy self. And then the second time the, of the chorus, you get to hear more of the chorus. So like parts that you didn't hear before, and it changes it up a bit. But then you also get to hear like the screaming, which is like, OK, now the second chorus is completely different from the first chorus. I don't think you find like many pop songs like this. Like most of them have a very standard format and this just throws it all out the window. It's like, no, I know you're expecting this, but we're not doing that. So mm. that's what I really like about it. It's enough to listen to one more.